G'day guys, and welcome to that pedal show. Mini Dan here. Mini Mick here. Hello, and today we are going to be talking about mini effects pedals. Uh, Mick? Yeah? Slight problem. What is it? Don't you think we should be learning the guitar first? Good idea. I know, let's Scooby do it. No, Mick, no. We can't just Scooby do it. That takes too long production. All we can do is a finger snap. All right, all right, calm down. Don't lose your hair over it. What? Ah! <laughs> Where did the last 40, 30 years go, Dan? Uh, it threw it in the, the cave of discontent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Right, mini pedals. Uh, it's it's a craze that swept the guitar playing nation. And I thought we'd have a look at this these today because it's really interesting to see, you know, where we are and how we got here. Who, where, why, what for and how. It's enticing, isn't it? It is. Why, you know, have something this big when you can have something this big? Yeah. The evidence is there to see on the uh, on the board there. It's very windy today. It is very windy today. And not just in my underpants. It's very windy. What was it? sat on something here. Yeah? Oh, it's a cable. Um, talking of underpants. Um, okay. Now, there are millions of mini pedals available, aren't there? Millions and millions and millions and millions. Uh, what was the first one that you remember? The first one that I remember taking seriously was probably the um, TC, like Hall of Fame Mini and Flashback Mini. Okay. Because they seem to offer a lot of functionality in a very small footprint. Right. Um, Let's see. Yeah. That's the first one that I remember. Oh yeah, okay. Um, the EP Boost. And I remember seeing that going, no, how have they done it? And I can't quite remember, but there was, is there a battery in here as well? No, I don't think that does take a battery, that one does. Okay. It? There was there was one that came out really early on that also took a 9-volt battery, yeah. which blew my mind. So. Oh, no, it does. Yeah, yeah. There's a battery in there's there. There's a battery in there, right. The, that, the, 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 the wind is what you can hear, by the way, just in case you can hear that. It's very windy. Buffeting. As I can play a nightmare with the audio. Just uh, no, it'll be fine. I, I'm over it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I've, I've, I've beaten my demons, and I'm in a much happier place these days, Dan. Lovely. Uh, th just to confirm, there is a battery in the EP booster, which is incredible. Yeah. So that yes, I saw that and I thought, like incredible. How have they done that? And one of the things that's uh, enabled us to get into this position. Uh, well, there's a couple of things, first of all. Let's have a look at the fuzz face. Yeah, back up a sec. Why have we chosen these pedals? Right. So why, why have you chosen these ones? The, the two reasons. The, the fuzz faces, because the circuits in them are almost identical. It's such a simple circuit and it takes up such a small amount of space. Um, so what they've done is they've simply shrunk the enclosure. Yeah, here's an example of a pedal that never needed to be that big. Exactly. Is, is what you're saying. Exactly, there. exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, it, you know, it just looked so cool. It's not the same circuit, though, is it? Have you looked in there? Oh, um, so, the, the, it's, right, it's not the same circuit because it's the, um, the, the design is the same, but the layout's completely different. And there's a board in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, so sure. Maybe we'll get into that Sorry, a bit more yeah. deeply. So, yes, but the yeah the idea is that's the same circuit and you know similar with all of these, but I wanted to have a look at that specifically for keeping the same basic transistors, yep. but shrinking down the yep. layout of the board. I wanted to have a look at the we got the Pura from NRG Effects, and you know when you're making a, a a pedal that has lots of options on it, and when you shrink it down. What does that entail? You know, the decisions you have to make with that one. For anyone confused, they are these two. Mm -hmm. And then the the Sir Wright, again, you know, uh, similar thing to the, the Tube Screamer, but I just wanted to see if these sounds are exactly the same. Yeah. And then we have the Ibanez Analog Delay, and this is the original um, Ibanez 89 Analog Delay. And again, with the, you know, different chips and things and that, they've shrunk that down, have they managed to nail that sound? Um, yeah, it's, I, I find it really interesting that, you know, one of the things that Josh was talking about, Josh Scott from when he was here, um, where is it? <laughs> Dan has floor mounted the, uh, the, the horn. 
But he was talking about the importance of design as opposed to yeah the specific elements. Yeah, I'm 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 a <laughs> I'm a believer in that bigger is better. Sure, always, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard <laughs> to disagree. Big components, big enclosure. My brain tells me it sounds better. Yeah, but does it is the question. Okay, because there are some practical. And we will get onto this as I'm sure as we go. But the 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 big advantage of mini pedals, of course, is the perceived practicality, and I will say per perceived, because if you've ever put a mini board together, what you'll realise is they take up almost as much space yeah. as a big pedal once you need to get your foot on it. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it is sure there's a space saving and a weight saving, mm -hmm. but maybe it's not as massive as you as you might think. Having said that, if you had a nice little QMX six or something, and got them all and got them all super tight together, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that would be a nice little board. You could put it on a Nano, probably yep. a Pedal Train Nano mm -hmm. would work quite nicely. So yeah, there are some practical advantages as well. One practical disadvantage is, uh, as you alluded with the EP boost, is that quite a lot of them won't take a battery. Sure, because there's just not room in there to take a battery. Absolutely. So yeah. you, you need power anyway. Yep. Blah blah blah. Uh, we'll get onto all of that in due course okay so um, let's start with the fuzz face because i think this is a really good example because it's such a sensitive circuit yeah right um, and i would say this is my favorite fuzz face as well yeah of all the ones i own it's probably my favorite and what model is this one uh it's a bc 108 jimi hendrix okay so it's a silicon 108 the jimi hendrix one that that dunlop god bless him that was a yeah bit of, a bit of a shocker. Well, actually. he wasn't. He wasn't a young man. No. Um, but yeah, Jim Dunlop, bit like Les Paul. Sometimes when you say Jim Dunlop, you forget that there is a man. Absolutely. Jim Dunlop behind the brand. He's always been there. Yeah. It just you know. I yeah. met him a couple of times actually. So, Did you? Uh, yeah. Big respect to Jim Dunlop who died this week. Uh, we recorded this on the eighth of February, and I think he died on the seventh or the sixth. Right. So yeah. Thanks, Jim, for everything you did. Yes. Thank you, Jim. Um, Amps today, Daniel. Right, amps today. We have the Supro Black Magic. Yep. And the Boogie Full Fillmore 50. Fillmore 50. Lots of people have been asking about this. It's been in a box out there for ages and <laughs> uh, for various reasons haven't quite got around to it. So today we've got the Fillmore 50 and it's going to be doing um, duties today and the other videos we do today. Let's have a quick. I just I just want to do two minutes on this, Dan. If you yep. if you don't mind. Knock yourself out. Um, Fillmore 50. Right. I like like the idea of this. It's got two pretty much identical channels that you can set up in one of three gain modes. Right. So you can have two channels exactly the same if you want. Okay. Uh, or, you know, one that's a bit louder than the other, mm -hmm. but the same gain structure. Or you can choose like a, a clean, a, a mid gain and a, and a higher gain. I like that. So, and what's interesting for Boogie actually is that it's kind of deluxe dimensions. Right. Like um, Fender Blackface Deluxe Dimensions. It's okay. thinner than a lot of the amps to... tend to be quite deep. Yeah, right. I don't know if that makes any difference to how it sounds. Anyway, here is how it might sound. Give it a bit more of that. Clean sound. Loads of onboard reverb as usual. Classy, chimey. I must apologise. I haven't picked up a guitar since we were in Anaheim, which was. Did you even pick up a guitar in Anaheim? At least two weeks ago. Yeah, we did, didn't we? We played various things. Oh, we did. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you played, picked up that O guitar. Yeah, that was that cool. Was brilliant. Like that. Uh, so that's the clean. Then it's got a drive mode. A bit less of that. A bit more of that. Um, which goes to this much gain.
and then a high mode which presumably is high gain. <laughs> All foot switchable, and obviously, if you're using humbuckers or single cores, it's mm -hmm. going to sound different. But anyway, so quite a lot in, and you've got that, those three modes, literally times two. Right. So, so you can you set could, up. Yeah. That sounds and, fantastic. And foot switch between any of them. So, um, as usual, boogie don't make bad amps. I like the top end of it. Yeah, it does. It's got... Um, like a bright cap that seems like it's always on. Okay. Or something. On the clean channel. Which will be very apparent with your guitar, I would imagine. Lovely. And then that drive channel knocks off a lot of that top end and makes it quite mid-focused in, yeah, yeah, in a yeah. boogie mark kind of way. Anyway, lest we get too into that, um, that's doing one half of the job. And then with the uh, the other amp on as well. That's just the black magic. And then both of them. Yeah, man. Beautiful. Complimentary, actually. Yeah. Because you've got that sort of sparkly high bit of the... and Anyway. Both doing very different jobs. I really like that. Okay, so... On to, on to, on to pedals. Yes. So you want to start with the fuzz then? I do. I do. I want you to play. Okay. So this is your favourite fuzz face, right? Yep. Yeah. Nice. Groovy. Sorry, my uh, guitar's a little bit out of tune. Here we go. Okay, now this is the mini version. Very different. Yeah, the, the top end in the mini one is... Now, let's just say that probably if you got another one of these It'd be and put again. it side by side, it would be a little yep, bit different yep. just for, because of the nature of the transistors and everything. Um, so this is a really good example of layout in design. And, you know, the, so the, the transistors in these two are, you know, supposed to be the same transistors, yep. right? But... Um, with such a massive difference in uh, the gain ranges between transistors, that makes a huge difference. But also, 
um, you know, layout with these things does make a difference as well. Yeah, because this is on the old-fashioned <clears throat> brown hand-wired mm -hmm. circuit board. Sure. Using full-size everything. Yep. This is on a like a PCB, or at least a, like a little tiny circuit board with small components and all the rest of it. So, That's right. Yeah, so when you say layout, you also mean layout and component sure. selection. Yeah. There's a... Um, there's a there's a surface mount element. Now it's got an LED in it as well. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Which is more gubbins in there. More gubbins. Yep. Yeah. Technical term. <laughs> um, there's a there's a surface mount uh, surface mount layout. So surface mount is a type of manufacturing procedure. Um, if you're looking at the fuzz face, that's what they call through hole components. So there's a that board. And the legs of the components actually go through the board and get soldered underneath the board. The surface mount components, um, the uh, they actually sit on top of the board mm -hmm. and they're basically, you know, uh, flown and soldered directly on top of the board. Uh, what's happened with the technology lately? There's a, um, I think we were using generally. There's I think it's O six O three. Uh, which is the, the, you know, up until five years ago or whatever, they were the size of the, of the surface mount components, and they were really small. Now we've got, I think, 0604, which is like grains of salt. So we were sent a couple pedals recently that needed a little mod done to them, and in the bag with the pedal came a bag full of what I assumed was dust, which I was going to throw <laughs> into the bin. I was like, what... Why has that been put in there? It, it looks just like a load of old machining crap that's come off after you've, I don't know, gone down a... It, they look like filings, yeah. don't they? They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're so tiny. And I looked at them and I was like, hmm, they're all the same. Yeah. So they are obviously something. Yeah. And they're... they're... So they're capacitors, I think, those <laughs> ones. So, yeah, resistors and capacitors, they, you know, they just make them in this format so tiny and what has pushed this is the phone technology okay as the phones have got smaller and mass produced the, you know they're really pushing this you know nobody mentioned android <laughs> that was very funny um right so um there is a service mount uh stuff going on uh in the smaller fuzz face but the re the reality is between the fuzzes you could have the same board in there because the, the actual circuit doesn't take up much space at all yeah um if you've ever looked inside a fuzz face it's mostly air yeah 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 there's you know the, the tiny um but the difference sonically could literally just be the transistors yeah you know so but you know i, I really like the small fuzz face i think it's you know it does look awesome it clear, um i saw i've played most of the small fuzz faces and my memory of the one, when I first played them was that they didn't clean up as well it got one of them I played got quite muddy right it was a band of gypsies the dark blue one I think right might be red apologies um, anyway one it just didn't clean up as well that cleans up quite nicely mm. and there is something happening in the high end it's retaining more high end than the than my fuzz face and I don't know if that's a impedance thing or whatever it is have a play a second see what you think because it will come out more with your guitar okay um so here's the sound of the amps <laughs> Do a bit with volume turned down a sec. Yep. Man. 
quite different. Yeah. It's a, something They're about cool. the, something about the high end in the mini that I got quite like can be yeah, useful with certain amps. Absolutely. Um, and actually, I think that particular big fuzz face is definitely better suited to some other amps. Yeah. I think sounds sounds cool here. Doesn't sound as glorious as I remember it sounding. Right. But uh, they are. The point is, is they are different, aren't they? A absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's have a look at these tube screamers then. Yep. These should be a little bit closer. I've right. Okay. So we've selected these. Um, as tube screamer fans will know, the original TS eight hundred eight was not a true bypass pedal. It's buffered bypass pedal. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a Keeley mod one with true bypass. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's the mod plus with true bypass, I believe, which brings it a little bit closer to this one. Which does have true bypass as well. Correct. I believe. Yep. That's why we've chosen them. Okay. So, um, yeah. yeah. Groovy. And we we've long been fans of this little one. Love the little one. It's brilliant. Right. So this is the big one. the ability to sound very similar indeed yeah i mean clearly the knobs aren't always going to be in exactly the same place on each pedal mm -hmm. but they sound very similar yeah try with the telly Interestingly, I think this one's rolling off a tiny bit, a bit more bottom end than yeah, this one. Yeah, that one does sound a bit fatter, doesn't it? Yeah, so um, one of the things the Tube Screamer does is uh, you get, it, it cuts off a bit of bottom end mm -hmm. and you get a bit more overdrive in the high end than you do in the low end. And mm -hmm. So sometimes people will say, oh, I can hear the overdrive sitting on top yeah, right. of my Tube Screamer sound and that's uh, of the basic sound and that's kind of what a tube screamer does that one does it more than that one sure that one sounds more together as a pedal to me yeah so in a way we're not really comparing apples with apples because this is a keely mod and not the standard sure 808 and the keely mod does add in a bottom it, bit of bottom right. end okay. i think it adds in a tiny bit more gain as well okay so nevertheless 
I think there's an argument to say that could sound more like a classic 808 than that one right okay uh, you know yeah yeah because the, the shaping of the eq and stuff tiny tiny yeah, bit yeah, yeah. tiny bit but Fascinating. i think um you know regular viewers will know i'm pretty nerdy about tube screamers and that there are ones that i love and i don't seem to be I, my other my favorite tube screamer ever is my other keely modded one which is the non-true bypass one right no matter what tube screamer i try i can't get away from that one that one seems to be the one that does it for me the most amazing so even the difference between two keely mod tube screamers is per perceivable <laughs> to me maybe not to you but i would be so absolutely happy to run that one yeah on a mini board yep i don't think there's any compromise there i'm no. not going oh i wish i wish i had the big one no and it's it's amazing because there's you know if you look inside the two there's quite a lot different is there oh. well I'm, I'm purely down to the component size and, and layout they've had to cram so much you know and this is a testament again to um you know one of the things that um uh, josh was saying is that he would much rather have a great design pedal with less components than awesome components with a crappy design you know, because it is all about the design. There's a lot in the tube screamer design, you yeah. know, and it makes the, you know, so <clears throat> if you've got a fuzz face where you've got six components, every single one of those components is absolutely crucial. Yeah. You've got a tube screen with 120 different components, you know, top one of those out, meh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Not not saying it doesn't make a difference, but it's not as crucial not as, as crucial. you know. Sure. Yeah. Um, I was going to have a quick listen to those uh, with um, humbuckers. Yeah. Right. that becomes more obvious with that guitar it's clearer sounding isn't it the yeah. little one yeah, yeah definitely clearer sounding yeah uh, which is what you um high gain players will love the tube screamer for for that for if you if you've got it going into a gainier amp with loads of bass you stick the tube screamer up front as a boost with nowhere near that much gain on and it just cuts off that bottom end a little bit and it works particularly well with humbuckers and as you know it's been used right across heavy music as a as a way to do things yeah yeah coupling that with it in the front end of a 6105 or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, cool are you, did you want to give that a go or well no i know I'm moving on um so sir riot this has become a classic i'm not familiar like, with this pedal okay so i remember when they released this i know it exists i'm just not familiar with how it sounds just to qualify that <laughs> it's as far as high gain tones are concerned it sort of became an instant classic right um that you could plug it into a a clean Fender type amplifier, and oh, then oh, hello, and uh, yeah, and and get some some really ace tones out of it. So this is the original. I, I, this is the Les Paul into both amps clean. <laughs> Those three switches one is loads of bass one is bass cut and one is mid focus is it do you know uh yeah have a listen have a listen <laughs> Thank you. 
whatever they do, my favourite one is the middle. Yes, agreed, agreed. So that one's only got two. So I have two. So let's have let's have a listen to this one then. Go on then, chug away. <laughs> Okay, what's happening immediately there is this guitar is putting out a fair bit more treble right. than that Les Paul. Listen to what's happening in that amp. I like the smaller, the, the the mini version better. Yeah, it's definitely hurting the front end of the boogie a bit. Right, the presence needs to be rolled off and the treble needs to be rolled. It's right. it's just it's kicking. probably a lot more lot more. Um, it's where you're sat yeah. in front of that as well because yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. getting quite as much. That sounds massive. Where I'm you're sat. not getting that. Yeah, no. and actually that's that's the kind of thing that could really help you cut in a live mix. So yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, but there's there's very little in it, you know. And again, uh, you know, they've shrunk down the you know the layout and everything but the design is the same sounds fantastic they do sound quite similar could i could i hear it just in a lower gain yeah, yeah absolutely mode, yeah yeah uh just for a second yeah i like the sound of that pedal it's very much honestly it's a it's a classic yeah so i'm on the neck pickup now as well We've got a wicked rattle somewhere as well, so I don't know if that will come through on the mics, but something in the room is vibrating is what I mean. Necessarily call that low gain, but yeah, no, I think as soon as the, so with if I could go down with the gain any lower than that, check this out. It's 
As soon as it's on, it's biting. It takes all the high end away, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess don't buy a Sir Riot if you uh, want a low gain overdrive. But very, very cool sound. Mm. Very cool sound. Okay. And now we're looking at the um, the analog delay. So this is uh, the mini um, Ibanez, and it's it's different. Is it analog, Dan? It's completely analog. Okay. Yep. Now there is um, what I thought they had done. Let me just quickly scan the back and see if it is here, because I do have the original, which is the same series as the the 808 with a square button on it um, but this is much brighter and it's around this is very similar sound to this okay right. the original um, so the original one was an, uh, an 18 volt pedal it had yep. two 9 volt batteries in it and it's fantastic but it's it's quite dark right whereas the 89 things got a lot brighter and this um, you know, it's you know in a similar vein to that. So it sounds more like that one. It sounds a lot more like this one. And I guess deliberately chosen an analog delay because one would assume it's harder to do analog in a small box than Absolutely, it is digital. We know from the TC uh, mini flashback that that does a great job compared yep. to the reg regular flashback. So Yep. So how, yeah, exactly. How have Ibanez done? Because we, we know that, you know, there's, if you have a look at the circuit board on this, there's so much going on. Really? You know? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. So it's bucket brigade, is it? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and those big chips and big chips. So how have they? How have they done? Nearly lunchtime. Getting getting all that. Uh, yeah, a bit peckish. Yeah. How have they done getting all that into a smaller enclosure? Okay. So this is the original. I, I, I'm going to set you up with a little bit of this. Yeah. Don't mind. With... <laughs> Come on. Um... <laughs> to play when you're changing them. <laughs> So it does an excellent job of that really close delay. Okay. Now if we just if you just hit like hit the note for me. So the that, maximum delay that time. Is the maximum delay time. What is that like? Two hundred and eighty milliseconds if, or something. If that. If It's, it is extraordinary, right? And so, again, if you just hit a note for me and have a listen to the EQ on the repeats. All right, the bottom end starts rolling off, but this still retains the top end. So I want to see how close. First of all, let's have a look at the delay time, all right? So maximum delay time on the 89. Okay, delay time on the analog delay mini. So at least double. What's that, closer to 600 maybe? Just at a guess? I yeah. think, yeah, 400 or so. Yeah, anyway, yeah, okay, yeah. much okay, longer. So, so now if we start pulling this back, let's see if it brightens up. A little bit. That can you affect the way it decays? No. 
because it, it, it gets there, but it doesn't get there in the same way. The filter sweep on the decay is wider in the old one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it still sounds cool though. sounds less muddy sounds less confused yeah so it sits out of the way a bit better mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. you've kind of got to use it for short delay haven't you it's, it's well, hard to use it for well you can't do anything else with yeah, it. Yeah, that's yeah, it yeah. you know um there are things that you can do with setting the timing up and the chips and things to 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 get the maximum amount of delay time but as it stands, that's all it's got, you know. So it's impressive that with a um, in such a tiny little unit, you the new one does have, you know, that much. Yeah. You know, at least double whatever the you know the time that that's got. Give us a play. So um, what I want to do is turn the tube screamer off just so that we're hearing okay. just the pedal. Yeah. Yep. Cool, huh? I was enjoying some of those short sounds with you know yeah, the short yeah. delay with the long repeat. Yeah, yeah, I, and those sort of faux reverby type things. Yeah, and, and, and certainly the thinner one's a bit thicker sounding. Yeah, sorry, the smaller one is a bit thicker sounding. Yeah, um, but on the short delays, you know, it's cool though. It's, yeah, it, it's still it's, it's a great sounding delay. Yeah, but it's you know it's again we you know we're we're comparing old. Yeah, you know, old 80s. and you couldn't say you, do, you. There's no way you could say that one is palpably better than no. the other. No. It, it's a, it's a, um, you know, it's a matter of pure opinion mm. uh, a, a, as to which one you like the sound of more. Sure, sure. And actually, you a couple of tweaks elsewhere in your in your rig, mm -hmm. EQ or whatever, would get you to where you need to be. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. really, the only remaining question is, do you want to save the space? 
<laughs> sure. And how much space are you saving? Well, let's let's get to space in a second. Got one more thing to have a look at. So this is the Pura. Yeah, I turned this um, on deliberately so we would, uh, you know, like a natural segue into the Pura. <laughs> Very nice. <Yeah. laughs> and the reason I wanted to have a look at, so this is when we, we first saw this at our old place. Yeah. Um, and so uh, Neil Grimes over at NRG FX is making these. They're, it's an absolutely superb sounding overdrive. But just have a listen to this one. If you give some swaying. Uh, we love you, Neil. But but please, I, if I can't, if I don't know what the knobs do, I don't know which ones to turn. OK, um, <laughs> I, I, I basically know what they do. Do you? Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. I'm sure it wouldn't take you long to learn. Well, the idea is unless you're colorblind like you've me. You've got you've got two channels here. Um, I'm not colorblind. <laughs> you got you got two channels on this on this so you, and with different master volumes yep. um, as well. Uh, and then you've got bass and treble and output. Okay, so on this setting, um, you just have a go on this one for us. Sorry, I'm I'm still confused about what these knobs do. Uh, I think this is volume for the bridge pickup. <laughs> Okay, it's not complex. The bridge pickup <laughs> controls are here, and the neck pickup controls are there, which is the opposite way around to yeah, what yeah. I'm used to. Right. So anyway, apologies to PRS for continually getting it wrong. Killer, right? Rock and roll. It's so good. Now, because there's a lot of controls on here, right? There's there's two channels in this. So to turn this into a like a mini pedal, you have to say, okay, we need to get rid of one channel. What's got to go? Yeah, what's got to go? Yeah. In, so in all of these other pedals, the features are exactly the same. Exactly. Well, apart from the sir, which has only got two uh, toggle switches. To toggles positions. on the toggle. Yeah. Yeah. You know. uh, so. Yeah, when, when when a designer is making choices to to make, you know, if they've got a pedal that has a lot of features on it. Shift and they've got to make smaller. Exactly. So they have to make some decisions. So the first decision that's obviously been made is one channel or two, but obviously it's just going to be one channel. So that knob's gone, that side is gone. Okay, now we're down to uh, master volume, bass treble, and gain. So... What um, Neil's done here, you've got your gain, volume, and treble, and the bass is on a small pot on the inside. Right. So you you still got that control, but you have to open it up and get to it, and you know. Set and forget. It, yeah, yeah. And you know another common thing with like you know toggle switches on the outside of these pedals. A lot of the mini pedals have dip switches on the inside. Yeah. You know because it um, takes less space, and every fraction of a millimeter when you're doing the layout for these things is crucial. Yeah. Because there is a standard format, you know, for the size of these pedals. You know, so I've got a whole bunch of them down here, and obviously the ones on there. But you've got to make them fit into that. You know, so literally every fraction of a millimeter does make a huge difference. Um, so now, I, if we have a look at, um, yeah, so that was the, the big Pura. Now we go down to the, the smaller Pura. could mindlessly chum away on power chords like that yeah it's it's just awesome. all day yeah can you put a bit more gain on the uh, little one please
Great. Yeah, I think the big one sounds uh, ostensibly more impressive. Okay. It's bigger, mm -hmm. more gain. Mm -hmm. um, but I think. Well, yes, because it's more gain because you've got the choice of those two channels, you know, so you can you can kick more gain into it. But um, I think in the context of playing in a band, for yeah. example, um, actually the the slightly clearer to me. I mean, you can turn the gain down. Obviously, you don't sure. have to have it that gainy. But p for my uses mm. personally. That's more gain, more gain than I ever need out of a single pedal. Sure, because I juice it with something else. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's interesting that the, you know, as a designer and the, you know the way Neil does the layout of the boards and everything, he's had to make some, some decisions mm. about okay, how can we get this, into this, you know, so, you know, and I think he's he's done a great job. It sounds it sounds fantastic. Arguably, it doesn't sound exactly the same as the big one, you know. Um, but it does sound, you know, brilliant. It still sounds like a Pura. Yes, you know? I think that the, the overall point there is, are you making a massive compromise using a mini pedal over a, yep. over a big pedal? Yep. No. Right. doesn't feel like a massive compromise to me at all. It feels like, you know, and clearly not every pedal, not every mini pedal is going to be fantastic, but in the cases, in the ones that we've tried here, I think you're talking about marginal. Yeah, absolutely. Marginal differences that are... Um, you know they're not absolute they're not you couldn't say that one is better than the other you, sure it's just a, a tiny yeah it's a fine line so that are the pedals that have been basically shrunk down to yep. fit the format then we have guys like uh, j rocket audio uh, released th you know this series um a couple of years ago designed specifically for this format we've liked every one of these it's killer the touch od especially yep and then there's the immortal echo is it yep um there's a couple of others very very cool we've yep. done those in pick and mixes before and then we have the this is a classic the tc spark and again a, you know a really simple booster but again designed from scratch for this format you know so um original designs of yeah i mean there know, is a large um spark as well with four knobs <laughs> now so you know this is what we started with Right, back in the late seventies, and the, and you look and the fuzz face, you know, this was what was appropriate, and and still awesome to this day. But shrinking down a pedal to this size, it's like, do you remember the the, the Nokia phones? Mm. And the other was a phone that fits a phone that fits in your pocket is no big deal, but it depends on which pocket. And that was the little change pocket from your okay, jeans. yeah, yeah. So. One of the things about having pedals this size, I mean, they're obviously they're great. What are the drawbacks to it? Well, the drawbacks are, so let's say I want to have a booster and I want to have a delay pedal and there's a nice overdrive there. Um, let's get a chorus and, and I think, yeah, man, awesome. There's my board, um, phaser, you know, it's it's amazing, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, think I just turned three on and off with one stomp there, which actually could be useful. It could be, if that's what you want. If there's your preset, you know. But here's the other issue. If I've got this on its Todd, right, and I go to turn it on, and I hit it at the wrong angle. Yeah, yeah. Particularly true with this, which was taller. Right, there you go. Yeah, got a solution for that. So. Stomp trap. Um, our dear friends at Schmidt Array mm -hmm. sent us this, which is made by a friend of theirs. Right. Which is a housing for a mini pedal. Now, when you look at it, when I took it out of the box, I thought, wow, that's over-engineered. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like the, the clippiest clip you've ever clipped. So when you stick the um, pedal in there, this is how hard it is to get the pedal in, because it, it really holds them. This is where I'm going to do myself in, probably. So it's quite hard to get the pedal in the flipping thing. As we've proven, I picked up another one. Oh, no, hang on. It's much easier if you employ a different method. <laughs> Apologies to everyone at, um, at Stomp Trap. So there you go. Once it's in, if you just prise things apart rather than... So, so that device is basically 
to steady things up. And if you had a wooden pedal board, it's got two screw holes in it, so you could basically screw the thing to the deck. Yeah. And actually, I thought, well, it's way too big, but actually, if you stick a jack in the either side... Yes, of course. You've saved a little bit of space, yeah. and it's held in there. There is no way if you step on that. So That's with this, anywhere. you step on it, yeah. does that, even mm -hmm. with Velcro. With this, literally no way mm -hmm. when it's when it's when it's done. So, so that's a consideration. Yeah. Um, Stomp trap. If you're yeah. interested in checking those out. But the other thing that I find amazing. So you know, most of these things. You know, we've got. Um, you know, we're talking about the different uh, format for the surface mount things that enables a lot of these designs to happen. But if you look at something like this, and this is we've looked at this last year. The uh, the Moor, which is the uh, speaker cab simulator radar pedal, that is what holds all of your um, IRs and things, and it's got all the you know you can. Uh, well, it's a computer, isn't it? It is. It's a, it absolutely. It's this. Sure, exactly. So it basically uses the same technology, the same, um, you know, the the crazy tiny components and that stuff. And without that format, that sort of stuff wouldn't be possible, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, I am going to have a, a look at this because I've I got a setup at home, um, and I'm I'm looking at some different home recording things. And so I'm looking at this at the moment, coming out of a Valve preamp, and just seeing what sounds I can get as far as IRs are concerned, because you can load your own IRs into this thing as well. So where's Dan gone? It, well, I'm just I'm in the spirit of of you know, trying this stuff out because I, I must say... I love the curve. I love the curve. While he's doing that, I'm getting rid of my car and buying a van because <laughs> I can't fit my cabs in my car. Well, there you go. And, and, I love and it. You'll be, yeah, it's great. And it's you'll the be, curve. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll be getting you to take my cabs around for me as <laughs> yeah, well because I won't fit in my car. That's the fact of the matter, isn't it? Um, yeah, but, uh, you know, this is where we're at with mini pedals. And I, it is it's really cool. Um, but, you know, the thing to remember as well is that, you know, again, uh, you can't just group all these things into one genre. They're, they're all different, whether they're designed from scratch to fit into that enclosure or whether yeah. they're something that's been shrunk down. Um, you know, things to consider. So mini, let, let's finish this <coughs> off. Mini pedals that you have and you do use. This one. Moor Trellicopter. Moor Trellicopter. I love that pedal. Now, would it be my first choice for a tremolo pedal? Yeah. Probably not. Probably not. But... For certain situations where I'm only using a tremolo in one part of the song, I, I can yeah, squeeze yeah. that on anywhere. This was my compressor. When I used compressors, that was my compressor of choice, actually, because right. right. it's got the dry through mode. Great. SP compressor by Exotic. Really like that. In fact, I've lent mine to somebody, which I must get it back off them. Uh, the Mura Elect Lady. Which we know you've which used we know quite on, a lot. Yep, used, that was on the, the singles that we did. Every human being alive should own one of these. Incredible, uh, T absolutely incredible. TC Electronic um, Ditto Looper, which enables you to play with yourself. <laughs> I thank you. Try the veal. And I just thought I'd show that. This is my old muff buzz from before foot switches were, foot switches were employed. Wow. Isn't that cool? So you put that on your strap, do you, or something? Uh, yeah, so do you remember when the... Um, what were the series that, that came with the jacks? The, 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 oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. So um, Dan Armstrong. Balls. Yes. Yep. Uh, so, you know, small pedals have been around for, for a while, but, you know, no footage of that one. And uh, in all honesty, it doesn't sound great. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's a good place to leave it, isn't that's it? That's a good place to leave it, yeah. Okay, so um, how Oh, I'll just finish off with this one. A real strobe tuner. In the mini format, you know, but also which the, is your favourite tuner, isn't it? That's my favourite tuner, but the Polytune as well, yep. you know, in that small format, it's you know, it's all there. The world is your lobster. There you go. Okay, um, how are we going to follow this? I think we should have a mini pedal challenge. Okay. To follow up. Right. Um, so nano board, mini nano. pedals only. Uh, okay. So we will do that in in a few weeks' time. Perfect. Good. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, Massive thank you to Mini Me and Dan as well that popped up at the beginning. <laughs> uh, that's uh, my son, Zach. 
and uh, and uh, his best mate Louis. Uh, also, massive thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much. Really appreciate all your support, guys. Uh, literally couldn't do it without you. Massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and bought yourself a garment um, or a hats and beanies and... Strings soon. Strings soon. Yeah. Um, and some other things. Anyway, check check us out at uh, thatpedalshowstore.com. And big thank you to our exclusive preferred retailers in the USA is... It is Rift City Guitar of various locale. <laughs> yeah, go check them out. Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. Uh, thanks to all the guys there. And also Pedal Empire... In Brisbane, Queensland. Yeah. Australia. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.